Hi, kids. It's Rogan. How are you? Uh, yeah, between the mold, shortness of breath, of short, shorterness of, of breath ring, and uh, and this shattered tooth, uh, I appear to be pretty feverish. Just broke a shudder some cold sweat walking across the room to get this phone. Uh, I even seem to be losing more weight, which at this point is impressive. Uh, but I thought maybe if I just laid down <laughs> right where the fan can hit me with the breeze, uh, maybe I can make a post about a movie or two and uh, <clears throat> get through it without just breaking down into silence or unconsciousness. So. Yeah, it hurts like hell right now, this tooth. I'm being brave. Brave as fuck. You can't see it. You can assume I'm just lying, actually. Uh, uh, I guess you can tell from sort of the way I'm holding my mouth on that side. It's pretty swollen. Uh, so, uh, all right. So the next movie on my 80s list uh, of confirmed recommendations is called Humanoids from the Deep. Uh, you know, it's not... Um, particularly, uh, impressive or, uh, exciting in any, uh, extreme or remarkable way. It's just solid, solid movie. Um, I've seen it maybe four times over the decades and I always like it. Uh, it's funny because in 1980, uh, the language was not uh, popular enough for it to be bandied about this movie. But uh, now, if Humanoids from the Deep came out, everyone would call it Lovecraftian. The premise is that a New England fishing village finds itself first intermittently attacked by and then full-on under siege from evil fishmen who rape women and kill and eat people. I'm remembering right. They definitely raped the women. This is a pretty memorable scene. The costumes are pretty good. The monster costumes. Uh, shot on location. It's made by Roger Corman's production company, New World. Uh, Roger Corman first made his mark as a director and producer working for uh, AIP. Uh, where uh, he made uh, the movies he'll probably be uh, best remembered for among most of the people I know, uh, that is half a dozen or so sort of castle gothic thrillers based loosely on mostly Edgar Allan Poe stories, starring Vincent Price. Uh, those are Roger Corman pictures. Uh, through the 70s and 80s, uh, he produced a hell of a lot of B-sized movies. Uh, at New World Pictures, was also a notable distributor. His wife, Julie Corman, also did some producing, basically the same body of work. Later, he sold New World, and it became New Horizons, or rather, they started a new company. Um, it's a pet hobby horse of mine, as, as uh, the few of you. So, how shall we say blessed? As to put up with listening to me ramble in person, frequently, and at length, uh, as those few, those few blessed and privileged few will, will already know, uh, I, I got a real problem with television, generally, and I got a real problem with what home video and streaming have done to the cinema, uh, well, I mean, most people who love movies do one way or another. Uh, Roger Corman's later work as a producer exemplifies uh, one of the points I'm always trying to make on this, which is that uh, in the home video era and going forward now, the way that you uh, pick something to watch now, you're paging through option after option after option you pay or you have access to a library, pull a movie off a shelf full of movies. You got options. Um, 
But before home video and the home video library or rental store, uh, a theater with screens and screening rooms with seats would book a movie to show on that screen and then sell you tickets to that specific movie on that specific screen. And, uh, and they'd play it till no one was going to see it anymore, generally. And so the dynamic is any individual movie made had to draw the audience one person at a time, one cash ticket at a time. And that meant there's no bullshit before the video era. You, you, there, there's this effect where like now a lot of the movies are the cinematic equivalent of a high school kid on his first day at the fast food place thinking he can just shuffle his feet in the corner and scroll through his phone when nobody's looking and get away with that and still get paid. Uh, a lot of movies like that now, a lot of TV shows. Uh, there's a block booking effect in play too, uh, which is sort of a different story. But in any case, Corman was one of the last producers and his companies were one of the last... Uh, bastions of this understanding that you you make small movies no budget they better have production value of some kind they better offer you something unique in terms of entertainment value because you're paying to sit there and be entertained not just have it on in your living room and you can change the channel you went there to pay to see that in that seat at that time on that screen and uh and so this is why even the worst movies made in the 70s and 80s, that transaction and the aesthetics attendant on that structure for that transaction, it's just totally different. It, uh, you, can't, you can't lull an audience into thinking what you're doing is pretty good sort of by <laughs> obliquely or by osmosis from a generalization of opinion uh, under those circumstances and movies either worth paying to see or not. Uh, so like these Corbin productions, Humanoids from the Deep is a really good example of this. I, I first saw it on home video when I, I must've been 14, 15, whenever it was, I first started to rent piles of R-rated horror and science fiction movies. Uh, and I liked it. Okay. And, uh, back then it, uh, like a couple other movies had, had a rep for monster rape, the fishman raping the girl scene it might happen more than once, but in any case, that's what you knew about this movie going in. Uh, fishmen rape women. Uh, I would try to explain why that in itself has broad, enduring appeal, but I don't have to because you're already interested. Uh, so, <laughs> especially if you're Japanese. So, um, so yeah, I saw first saw it in the mid '80s uh, on home video, and I don't know, 10, 20 years later. Oh, I do know when I saw it again. Uh, around about 2000, 2001, when it kept, came out on uh, DVD, there was a line of bullshit flat transfer DVD home versions of uh, Corman Productions. Uh, sure, Dante's Piranha came out on DVD around the same time. Uh, also a New World production. Uh, you know, maybe I've only seen it three times because the first time I set out to watch every 80s movie, uh, I, I watched Humanoids from the Deep again. This was probably two or three years ago, maybe four years ago, maybe six. In any case, I was surprised to find still fun, holds up in every way, easy to sit through, never insults my intelligence, never bores me. I got no issues with it whatsoever. Now, if I had to tell you much about the details past its on location in New England, it's got cool fishman costumes. Uh, kind of feels like the fog, kind of feels like Jaws, low budget. I couldn't tell you a damn thing. Uh, but it's Roger Corman producing, so I know. Uh, it's just solid on, on technical fronts. Uh, it'll have good camera work, good acting, good writing on the dialogue level. Uh, Corman did not fuck around with bullshitters bullshitting their way into making bad movies trying to trick you into thinking that they're they're not bad movies 
he made good movies, even when he made lousy movies, if that makes sense. So, yeah. Yeah, I recommend Humanoids from the Deep. Uh, this, this kind of movie is probably free on YouTube right now. I don't know where I saw it last time I watched it. Uh, the main thing I remember is I was surprised to find I still like it, and it still holds up. But it shouldn't surprise me, because uh, you know, Roger Corman was sort of the quintessential uh, example of why uh, a Jewish businessman, the background of a Jewish businessman type, a guy whose parents, uh, half financed by their parents, bought a store and made it work, never sank the store. These guys understand how to make good movies in part because uh, making solid art is how you make money in the movie business. And so if you have the right kind of intellect and the right attitude, you got all that lined up like a bullet from a gun. Um, that's a shame there aren't more like him now. Uh, He's another aspect of that is that Roger Corman, he didn't bring ego to this. To the extent that it was marketable, he made himself an auteur as a director towards the end of his 10, 15 year run directing movies himself. But then he backed up to producing. He didn't feel like art was something he needed to make recognizably his own or sign with a flourish. Uh, plays the thing uh, it's the song not the singers and uh, and Corman understood that always um, but I, don't, I don't even remember who directed Humanoids from the Deep or who wrote it because the body of work is New World Pictures and that's the reliable brand there and they put out a wide a ridiculously wide variety of low budget entertainments uh and uh, I am confident in saying, without looking at lists, that most most of those movies hold up really well today, especially compared to what passes for low-budget crap now, which, compared to even the weakest shit Corman and his associates made at New World, appalling. This <laughs> is an appalling dearth of entertainment value. Uh, you yeah. know... Yeah, I don't think you can go wrong watching Humanoids from the Deep. Uh, yeah, and like I said, it's Lovecraftian. That's, it's a buzzword, right? It'll make you guys watch it.